Hey, welcome to Mike's Trains. Um, this video, uh, we're going to revisit uh, my programming track that we built in a previous video. Uh, someone had asked how, how it hooks up to the computer and works with the JMRI software to program the decoders. So while I'm no expert in JMRI, I'm still learning how to use it. I can give you a basic of what it looks like and how the hookups all work. Before we do that, let me show you what I did with the locomotive. So I have this locomotive from Fox Valley and I had to, this was not DC, DCC equipped, it was DCC ready so I had to install the chip on it. And I thought it was kind of neat that you don't have to actually remove the complete shell. Um, all you do is you pull off this uh, back hatch here and there is the uh, the circuit board for the train now underneath this is the, the the light for the for the rear lights on it okay and then right underneath it this back section here is the DCC decoder so when you're looking at it this chip right here is the decoder and it takes a little bit of patience, but it's actually quite easy to do. This is the pin. So can you see that? This is the pin, the shorting pin they, they, it comes with. But anyway, that's the, that's the, uh, the shorting pin. So this is actually pre-installed inside underneath there. So all I did was took some tweezers and I grabbed it from the sides and I pulled it out and then it the part that takes the patience is these these legs are very bendable um, but with tweezers again with the DCC board very carefully so you don't damage the board sliding the pins back into where that that uh, shorting pin came out from so you just slide this back in and that's all there is to it and then you take this you snap this back on like that and it's done and it's ready to be to be run and programmed and, and used with DCC so now that we've got that part taken care of let's look at the connections to hook this to the computer all right, so what we have here is I have my connections right here. So I made these wires right here. These are alligator clips just soldered to wire, and then I tin the ends here. And then the things that come when you buy the, the, the JMRI kit is you get this box, which is the Sprog 2. This is the interface that runs between the computer and the train. Um, you get a power supply, which is this wire right here, and it plugs into a wall outlet. So you strip the wires, you, you plug them into two of the connections, you take your other two pins here, and you tap them into these two connections, and then the whole thing plugs into the box. Then on the other end, uh, you have a USB interface cable, plugs into the box, and goes into a USB on my laptop. And once you install the software and you'll have to install drivers and then they give you all that on I got everything all the software on a on a flash drive it comes like this and that has everything installed on every, everything on it to install the program onto my computer, the drivers and everything. But I did, just so you know, I did go to their website. You do want to get more updated stuff just in case something new came out, which I did, and I installed that whole thing on the computer. So now you can see the red lights are on here. So obviously I already have it hooked up to my computer and I have it plugged into the power supply. So this, this light here tells me that I have power to the wall this light here tells me I'm hooked up to USB on my computer. If it's not hooked up right or it's not working right, it'll be flashing. Um, and then all I'm going to do is take these alligator clips and I'm going to plug 
one onto this pole and one onto this pole. Okay, and I taped up the ends so they don't short out and touch each other and short everything out. So we're okay like that. So maybe just for my own, we'll flip that around that way there. Okay, so now I've already have JMRA opened on my computer. And you can see it there. And I've already started building my roster, but I haven't programmed this locomotive with the uh, the locomotive number. So I'm gonna show you how that works really quick. Actually, um, let me show you the interface to, to drive the locomotive. So I'm gonna to go to Actions. I'm gonna click New Throttle. And the throttle is right here. Let me make it a little bit bigger. Yeah. Now there's an on off button right here. So we're gonna turn it on. Now we have power to the track. I have to program in the, lo the uh, locomotive number and DCC chips by default are three. So I'm gonna put in a three. I'm gonna set that as the number. And then we can go back to the locomotive right here. And I'm just gonna do the slider on the, uh, on the throttle. See, and everything works fine. I can control it just fine. And then there's a stop button. And then we can go reverse the same way. And everything works. And it has all the functions that I would have using my DCC throttle. So back to this. There we go. All right. Now I've never done this with my computer screen before to, to try and do this, but this is this is the uh, throttle so now we haven't gone into the programming yet uh, so let me close this throttle let me turn the power off we'll close this and now we're going to program and all i'm going to program in is the locomotive number on this locomotive is, is 8104 so all i'm going to do is i'm going to click new logo and um, fox valley doesn't show up in in this list here's a list of all the manufacturers or, or most of them and this is why you want to update your software because there may be new ones added there's new ones every day so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna check this box that says matched only and I'm gonna go read type from decoder and I'm gonna hit that and it's gonna go through it should go through see and it came up with um, TCS train control systems and there's my decoder chip so we're gonna select that one and I'm gonna write in here roster ID I'm gonna write uh, the locomotive number the um, model of the locomotive that I have so this one is is an ES Four four and I'm gonna put AC for the locomotive. I'm gonna do the long address right here, and then I'm gonna type in the number. 8104. And I'm gonna write it. And then save. So now that locomotive is right here in my roster and then I can open this up and add in the rest of it. So road name would be Lehigh Valley. The road number is 8104. I can add all those things in and this is the owner and this is the date that it was modified. But now we want to go in and we would like to uh, program this one. 
So right here we would en enter in the road name. So Lehigh Valley. And the road number, 8104. Now none of this stuff is going to get written to the chip. This is just for my own uh, information purposes so I can keep track of my locomotives. And the manufacturer is Fox Valley. Models. Fox Valley Models. And then save to roster. Okay, now here, here's some of the other things. See, you can have all of these things. Like this is a function map. Nothing is here yet for lights. See, I can't get to. There it is. There's lights, and you can adjust the dimness and every every possible thing that you can do is there. Um, I can set up a consist. Uh, I can do my speed controls, but see everything's in yellow, so that means that I haven't done everything yet. So why don't we go to roster entry. So what we have to do now is read all sheets down at the bottom. I'm going to click read all sheets. Like that. And then it's going to read all the CV settings throughout the whole decoder and it'll show me only the functions that this decoder is capable of once that's done. It, it takes a minute, but once it goes through all of it, then, then we, I can show you a little bit more of what that does. Um, and of course, you know, uh, on the tabs along the top here, um, only pertain to things that you can use. And I'll show you what happens if you get the things that you can't use. Um, but it's not gonna allow you to do things your chip can't already do. It only allows you to, to, to mess with things that the chip originally allows you to do. It doesn't give you more functions than you had originally. Okay, so now it's done reading the CV values. So now I have all the settings in here for this. Um, so let's look at what this chip can do. So now I can change this sheet determines which will control which outputs so you got all the functions here and then you have these buttons here you can control these are all the features that this chip has on it and I can change whatever I want this is for the lighting uh, let's see what else sound levels I don't have sound levels see it'll tell me this tab's empty because there are no options in this category I can go to the speed table right here and I can change anything in the speed curve of the, of the locomotive it's all on slide buttons you don't have to mess with the CVs and that's why I went to the JMRI stuff I, I thought it was really nice I can set up momentum you can mess with the CVs if you'd like to it's right there um, this tab I can't get into there's nothing there this is for analog controls if I want to have that function on so I can run this on DC or not um, so that's all the stuff that's, that you can do with this. I, I think it's really good. I, I, I think it's the best money I've spent for these locomotives so far. Um, this is the TCS decoder. See, I'm not going to mess with any of this stuff. Now, when this is done, if you make changes, you click down at the bottom here, write all sheets, and it'll rewrite whatever changes you made to the decoder, and you're done and good to go. Um, I didn't make any changes to this, so I'm just going to close this. Uh, save and close. So now I'm going to open a throttle. We're going to open for this, uh, which one did we do? This one, 8104. So I'm going to open this one. And I want to I want to open a throttle for it. So let's, let's do this. Throttle. And 8104 is now in the in the box here. So now I'm just going to take this slider and make sure that it's working. So let's back up a little bit. And there's our locomotive with the new address. 
Now I'm going to hit the slider and see if we got it going. Oh, we got to turn on the track power. There we go. And then we're good to go. And it's running on address 8104. We'll go reverse. And we're good to go. And I see the lights are working. Turn the lights on and forward right from the thing, just like on your DCC controller. There it is. So that's how it works. It's very simple once you get it working. Um, it, it took me a little bit because, well, it's me and that's the way I am. But it's it's a very good setup. I, I really like it. Um, I'm glad I got it and that's it so hopefully that that gives you a little help in knowing what the JMRI system is all about and uh, how it hooks up to your computer so thanks for watching um, if you'd like to see more of what I've done visit my website mikestrains.wordpress.com and if you're on Mike's Trains you can find me on YouTube uh, again it's Mike's Trains uh, so until next time uh, We'll see you later. Bye.